Is God our Is God our Father? Are we the children of God? A Quranic Perspective By A. Muhammad We often hear the term children of God spoken. This phrase is especially uttered by Christians. They also refer to God as their Heavenly Father. The well-known Christian Lord's Prayer opens with the words Our Father who art in heaven. This article analyses these terms from a Quranic perspective to determine how appropriate and also how factual they are. And whether there is justification in using these terms in reference to our relationship with our Creator. First, the terms Son of God and Children of God is used in biblical times. When we examine the original use of these terms in the Bible, we find that they were used metaphorically to describe any person who strove in the cause of God and who led a righteous life. The following are some examples. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God. Matthew 5 9 Those who are led by God's Spirit are God's sons. Romans 8 verse 14 We are the children of God. Romans 8 verse 16 You are the sons of the living God. Hosea 1 verse 10 Clearly, the terms sons of God and children of God in the above verses are not used literally. In the Quran, God proclaimed that He never had, nor will ever have any children. And they said, God has taken a son. Glory to Him, rather, to Him belongs what is in the heavens and the earth. All are obedient to Him. 2 colon 1 16. The Jews, the Christians, and the idolaters, who worship others alongside Allah, said that Allah had taken a son. He is far above and beyond such a thing, because He has no need of His creation, and no one has a son unless He is needy, and to Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. All created beings are His servants, in submission to Him, glory be to Him. They are His servants and He deals with them as He wills. Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth and all that is in them, and there is nothing in creation that is like Him. If He decrees and wills something, He only says to it be in itis as He willed it. Nothing can stop His command and His decree. Al-Baqarah 116-117 He begets not, nor was he begotten. 112-3 The one who did not give birth to anyone, nor did anyone give birth to him. So he has no offspring may he be glorified nor any parent. He neither begets nor is born. Quran, Eklas, 112.3 Furthermore, God is displeased with those who call themselves children of God and God puts the matter in the correct perspective. The Jews and the Christians said, We are the children of God and His beloved. Say, why then does He punish you for your sins? Rather, you are humans among others He has created. He forgives whom He wills and punishes whom He wills. To God belongs the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth and what is between them, and to Him is the ultimate destination. 518. Both the Jews and the Christians claimed, We are Allah's children and loved ones. Say, O Messenger, in refutation of their claim, why does Allah punish you for the sins you commit? If you were his loved ones, as you claim, he would not have punished you, by your being killed or disfigured in the world, and by means of the fire of hell in the afterlife. Because he does not punish those he loves. Instead, you are just like all other human beings. If any of them do good, Allah will reward them with paradise. If any of them do evil, He will punish them in the fire of hell. Allah forgives whomever He wishes through His grace, and He punishes whomever He wishes through His justice. The dominion of the heavens and the earth, and whatever is in between them, is Allah's alone. To Him alone is the return. Almighty 18. The Quranic words in 518 ascertain three important matters.
1. God reprimands those who call themselves children of God. 2. Those who claim to be children of God are told that they are no more than humans among others He, God, has created. 3. God created a very large number of species of living creatures and not just the humans. Among others He has created would also have a broader meaning. The entire human race is only one species among millions of other living creatures that God created. If we add to the above a small reminder regarding the infinitely small space we occupy in the vast universe around us, it becomes quite presumptuous yet again to think of ourselves as children of God. Those who like to call themselves children of God should show some humility and be reminded of the following words. Indeed, there is none in the heavens and the earth who does not come to the Almighty as a servant. 19 hours 93 minutes. The Jews, the Christians and some of the idolaters said, The merciful has taken a son. You who say this have indeed brought something monstrous. The heavens almost rupture because of this detested statement, the earth almost splits, and the mountains almost fall in ruins. All of this because they have attributed a son to the merciful. Allah is high above that by far. It is not befitting of the merciful to tack Eason as haze pure of that. There is no angel, human being or jinn in the heavens and earth but that he will come in submission to his Lord on the day of judgment. He has full knowledge of them and has numbered them exactly. Nothing of theirs is hidden from him. Each one of them will come to him on the day of judgment alone, without any helper or any wealth. Miriam 88-95 Second, do we have to be God's children to qualify for his love? Somewhere along the line, a link was assumed between the concept of Heavenly Father and God's love for us, as if God is not able to love us immensely unless we are His children. Perhaps the catalyst for this manufactured connection is the following verse in the New Testament. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3 verse 16 God instilled in us love for our parents, children and family. Strong love such as the mother instinct, father love, love of our family and relatives, are instilled in the human being to ensure the survival and continuation of the human race. In contrast, God is not subject to, nor in need of such emotions as mother instinct, father love or the love of family and relatives, to be able to love us, or for that matter, love any of the other living creatures that He created. As pretty as the words in John 3 verse 16 may be, the above questions ultimately raise a question regarding their authenticity. To bring down God to our level, by ascribing to Him the same terrestrial emotions which we are subject to, is rather short-sighted. Just because we find it natural to give and receive love within our family set up, does not mean that God needs to be our Father, and we as children, for Him to grant us His love. Third, who is more worthy of God's love? We read in the Quran that everything in the heavens and the earth, including the animals and all living creatures, worship God and glorify Him constantly. Have you not seen that everything in the heavens and the earth glorifies God, even the birds in their flight formation? Each has known its prayer and its glorification. God is knowledgeable of what they do. 2400 hours 41 O Messenger! Do you not know that all the inhabitants of the heavens and earth from the creation of Allah, glorify Him? The birds that fly in formation also glorify Him. Of all those creations, Allah knows of the prayer of every one who prays, i.e. the human, and the glorification of every one that glorifies him, i.e. the birds. Allah is all aware of what they do, no action of theirs is hidden from him. To Allah alone belongs supreme authority over the heavens and earth, and to him alone will everyone return for accountability and regidal. And nor 41-42. In contrast, the following is said about the human being. One described as transgressing and ignorant. 33,72. Indeed, I presented to the heavens, the earth, and to the mountains the obligation to adhere to religion and guarding of wealth and secrets. They all refused to bear the obligation, fearing the outcome of doing so, but the human accepted to carry it. Indeed, the human is oppressive to himself and ignorant of the outcome of carrying such a burden. The human carried it as per the decree of Allah, so that Allah could then punish the male and female hypocrites and idolaters for their hypocrisy and ascribing partners with Allah. And so that He could forgive the believing men and women who carried the burden of obligation well.
and Allah forgiving of the sins of his servants who repent and is merciful to them. Al-Asab, 72-73 2 described as unappreciative, 1434 He gave you from everything you regested, and even from what you did not regest. If you try to count Allah's favors, you will not be able to do to their plenitude and variety. What was mentioned is but examples of his favors to you. Indeed, man is ever oppressive towards himself and very ungrateful of Allah's, the exalted, may he be glorified, favors. Ibrahim, 34. 3 described with the words, most of them to be wicked 7 102. Allah did not find most of the peoples who were sent messengers to be firm and constant in what he commanded most of them rebelling against him. al araf 102. 4 described as most argumentative 1854. I have explained in different ways in this Quran that was revealed to Muhammad, peace be upon him, many types of examples so that they will take a lesson and pay heed. But the thing that is most apparent in man, especially the disbeliever, is to wrongfully argue. al 54. 5. The majority of people on earth will mislead others away from the path of God. If you were to obey the majority of those in the earth, they will mislead you away from the path of God. They follow nothing but conjecture, they only guess. 6. 116. If you, O Messenger, supposedly followed most of the people on earth, they would mislead you from Allah's religion. Allah's custom has always been that the truth is with the minority. Most people follow nothing but speculation that has no basis and they think that those whom they worship will bring them close to Allah, whereas they are completely wrong in believing this. Your Lord, O Messenger, knows best those people who are misled from His path, and He knows best those who are rightly guided to it. Nothing of that is hidden from Him. Al-Anam 116-117 6. The majority of the human race are disbelievers. This means that only the minority of the human race are believers. The majority of people, no matter how eager you may be, are not believers. 12. 103. Most people will not have faith, even if the messenger should make every effort for them to believe, so he should not lose himself in grief over them. If they used their reason they would believe the messenger, peace be upon him, because he did not ask any reward for the Quran or for what he called them to. The Quran is only a reminder for all people. The signs showing that there is only one Allah, glory be to Him, are many, spread out through the heavens and the earth. The disbelievers pass by them, turning away from thinking about them and considering them, not paying attention to them. Most people do not admit Allah as the Creator and Provider, who brings to life and causes death, without also worshipping images and idols next to Him, or claiming that He has a Son, glory be to Him. The idolaters feel safe from a punishment in this world enveloping and overwhelming them, so that they cannot repel its or from the hour coming to them suddenly. When they are unaware so that they might prepare for it. Is it because of this that they do not believe? Yusuf, 103-107 Seven out of the minority who believe in God, sadly, the majority of them are committing shirk, associating partners with God. The majority of those who believe in God do not do so without committing shirk. 12 106 Most people do not admit Allah as the Creator and Provider, who brings to life and causes death, without also worshipping images and idols next to Him, or claiming that He has a Son, glory be to Him. Yusuf, 106 8 The verdicts of verses 12 103 and 12 106 tell us that the disbelievers and mushrikeen put together form the largest majority of the human race. 9. So what becomes of this large majority of the human race, disbelievers plus mushrikeen, in the hereafter? The Quran tells us that they are destined to hell. Indeed, those who disbelieved among the people of the book, as well as the mushrikeen, will be in the fire of hell, therein they shall permanently remain. They are the worst of creatures. 98 6. Indeed, those who disbelieve from the Jews, the Christians, and the idolaters will enter into hell on the day of judgment, wherein they shall remain forever. They are the worst of the creation because of their disbelief in Allah and rejection of His Messenger. Index, those who have faith in Allah and do good deeds, they are the ones who are the best of creation. Albaina, 6-7 What can be derived from the above is that, if we wish to determine who among God's creatures is more worthy of God's love, we find that the human being is definitely not at the head of the list. Other living creatures who worship God constantly and glorify Him constantly are more deserving to be called God's children, that is, if that term was to be used. However, none of God's creatures, humans or non-humans, are God's children nor should they be called such, not even the honored messengers of God. Rather, all are no more than servants of the Almighty One God. 
they said, The Almighty has taken a son. Glory to him. Rather, they are but honored servants. 2126. The idolaters said, Allah has taken the angels as daughters. Pure and exalted is Allah from the lie they say. The angels are in fact the servants of Allah, honored by him and close to him. They do not proceed before their Lord in any saying, so they do not speak until he orders them, and they act according to his command and do not oppose any command of his. Alan Bayah, 26-27 All who are in the heavens and the earth, including all humans, go to God as servants and not as children. Indeed, there is none in the heavens and the earth who does not come to the Almighty as a servant. 19 hours 93 minutes there is no angel, human being or jinn in the heavens and earth but that he will come in submission to his Lord on the day of judgment. He has full knowledge of them and has numbered them exactly. Nothing of theirs is hidden from him. Each one of them will come to him on the day of judgment alone, without any helper or any wealth. Miriam, 93-95